Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also spoiler alert, we're talking about some spoilers about everything. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I want to start by asking, what's new to you, Alex? Um, so today I had the day off, which was wonderful. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so I, I had the day off, but I had to go to I had to go to the dentist and uh, the mechanic. So it was less oh, of a fun yeah. day off. <laughs> well, sometimes you feel really satisfied when you do like chore stuff like that, though. Yeah, at least like, I feel accomplished. Oh, I did so many things that I hadn't that I needed to get done today. Whereas for me, it was like I'm just gonna do things that are gonna make me happy today. <laughs> well, good. What did you do? So I, so I started substitute teaching. And I've been yeah. burning through a lot of books because it's really boring when you're just sitting there and high schoolers <laughs> can take care of themselves. So, yeah, just babysitting. Yeah, and so I, I, I don't have any novels that I'm into right now, so I've been relying on poetry books. And those you can either burn through really quickly or you have to really sit with each poem so you can't, like, mm -hmm. you can't just sit there and read through, like, six of them. Yeah. So I was like, I should go buy some more books, and I don't live – too too far from Powell's in Portland, oh, and I'm so, so I jealous. just and and normally I'm like I will not go into Portland alone or I won't go to Powell's <laughs> alone because I just like the experience of going with somebody else. But for some reason, yeah, to, it is fun. It's so much fun. But for some reason today, I was just like so ready to go at it by myself. I got there, I found parking not too difficult, and then I got in there, and all of my like. Because usually I get really anxious about driving into the city for various, oh, you know, illogical reasons. <laughs> no, they're perfectly logical, man. You're like, oh, no, I'm on the Morrison Bridge. Now I'm on the east side of town. Oh, God, how did I get here? <laughs> I've been going in circles for 15 minutes. <laughs> There's no parking here at all. These are all one-way streets. Exactly. <laughs> um, but So I had, like, no anxiety for that whole bit. But then when I got in there, I was like, oh, no, I don't I don't really have a list of what I want to find to read. Um, uh, where where am I looking? And and if anyone's ever been in Powell's, it's a maze. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a multi-level labyrinth. <laughs> it, it really is. You're just like, oh, now I'm in the blue room, I guess. Uh, Rose room. OK. <laughs> exactly. And so I was just like stressed out. Because I couldn't find anything. And I, earlier in the day, I had asked people on, on social media, like, oh, mm -hmm. hey, what do you recommend? This this is sort of what I like. And I got a couple of responses. And I found a couple of those, and I bought some. Um, but then I was, like, looking through the small presses section. Because that's oh. that's what, what I really like. I like to support small presses and, and writers that don't have, you know, huge contracts or whatever. Also, yeah. I, I want to be a small press writer. <laughs> and I was just, like, looking. I was – there's only – two shelves there's a poetry sh oh maybe it's four but two poetry and two um fiction for the small press okay and i was just like scouring to see if i recognized any of the covers the titles <laughs> or the authors and i just barely i found like two or three and i was like uh this is so much i should have came up with a, a really good list <laughs> yeah i don't know what you're looking for and then, of course, so I, I had I started putting stuff back because I wasn't sure if, if I was going to get that many books. And then I go to pay. I had, like, six books in hand. Um, and then out in the lobby, they have these, like, new and old sale books. Okay. And, and basically all of them were, like, a flat $9.98. Ooh. For, like, these thick either paperback or hardcover books. So I picked up, like, four more books in the lobby. <laughs> so I ended up I ended up yeah. getting ten books today, and I only spent like ninety four dollars. You know what? You can't complain about that. That's Powell's is magic. It is, and I, I love that place. I, yeah, and I wasn't even trying that hard to like get the good deals because if you, you can really get some like used books there, old editions for really great prices, and I wasn't trying that hard for that, but I just got lucky. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I, uh, on a, an entirely uh, different note, <laughs> last week I went out and I saw Logan. Oh, how was that? Uh, I don't know if, you know, it was great. It was great. Like, not best X-Men movie, but, like, 
definitely in my top three X-Men movies, which which is saying something because it was a pretty solid top three before Logan. So. <laughs> I would retort, is there a best X-Men movie? Okay, okay, okay. The original trilogy, those movies aren't very good. Like, X-Men, it's okay. X-2, it's okay. X-3 is terrible. Days of Future Past is really good. That's um, true. First Class, I think, is underrated. I think that movie is super duper good. It and is very good, yeah. let us not forget, Deadpool, technically an X-Men movie. That's true, because there are x in it. Yeah, he is a it mutant. So, <laughs> and <laughs> and you got Colossus, you got a uh, Megasonic Teenage Warhead. It's an X-Men movie. It's just not, you know, an X-Men movie. <laughs> but no, Logan was super good. I cried. It was <laughs> it was fantastic. I definitely recommend checking that one out. Um it was a good time. Uh lots and lots and lots of violence and blood. So <laughs> <laughs> if that's not only, everybody's only, thing. The only review I heard of it was from like a a, a writer slash director on on Twitter, and he was just talking about how it's it's good, but there's also problems with it, which is sort well, of what yeah. this podcast is about. <laughs> it sure <laughs> is. In fact, in fact, Alex, I'd say that is a wonderful segue to start talking about today's topic, which. Um, I would characterize as being uh, stuff that other people like that we didn't necessarily like, and that's okay. <laughs> On my notes, I wrote, shows I hate slash have problems with. <laughs> oh, oh, so a little less kind than how I decided to phrase it, but still fair. Well, the funny thing is the first show that I listed on there, I'm obsessed with, so it's it's, it's just how I ended up writing it. <laughs> okay. Well, then, why don't we start there? What have you got? Um, so I recently started getting into the show The Expanse. Okay. Which was actually one of the book series that was recommended to me on social media today that I should pick yeah. up. Yeah, I, was I like, saw I, that. I don't want to buy it if I'm watching it, you know, because I don't want to... I don't like doing that. <laughs> no. Yeah, you kind of have to keep those separate at least. Do one and then the other. Either one and then the other or, or just pick one and go with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've definitely got something to, to bring up on that vein later. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but this show is, it's like, I don't know how to say, it, it's, it's not hard sci-fi, I don't really, that's sort of a loaded term I would say, um, but it's very much like the Battlestar Galactica remake series. Mm -hmm. Like they have the quieter sounds in space down, they have um, sort of the grittiness and the, the loneliness of a lot of, that was in that show a lot. Yeah. Um, but the, the and it's 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 actually really, really well done and the characters are so complex, but the main the male lead is constantly rewarded for being a dick. Oh, I hate that so much. Like he falls into doing the right thing sometimes and then when he makes a mistake they're all like, You made a huge mistake and then like he gets hailed as a hero for it. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's sort of it's sort of complicated because the show is divided between the people from Earth, the people from Mars, and the people from the asteroid belt. Okay. And none of them get along, but like the way that those factions perceive him is all really different. So, mm -hmm. so what his crewmates might say was the wrong move, the people of Earth might be like, "Whoa, this guy's like this crazy um, radical." Yeah, he's a renegade, renegade type. And then the the people of the asteroid belt are like, he's our hero, he's our figurehead. Okay. So it's it's just really strange. And then like I absolutely love the female lead. She is gorgeous. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. And like at the beginning of the show they joke about how she should be captain, and literally she is the captain, but they call him captain it makes no sense what it makes no sense she's so good at what she does and she's she's like the lead engineer and she's a genius and she's like has all the right intentions Ugh, it just frustrates yeah. me and then they like form a relationship out of nowhere and that's another yeah. way they reward him and i'm like he doesn't deserve her Ugh. You know, that kind of reminds me of one of my 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 minor issues with How to Train Your Dragon 2. I like that movie a lot. I really enjoyed it, and I thought they did some, a lot of things really well. Like, they did, they made some 
good, correct choices. But one thing that I totally thought they were telegraphing in the beginning was that Astrid should be chief. Like, it totally rang that way when he's like, I don't know about this whole chief thing. And she's like, oh, man, being chief is awesome and would be amazing. And, like, Astrid's super cool. I thought it was going to end up like, hey, maybe Astrid should be chief. And Hiccup has to go and do his own thing. And that's cool and okay. But then it just turned into that story of, like, the boy claiming his birthright. And it's like, but but he's not the best guy for the job, I don't think. He's He's got other talents. Like, Astrid would be a really kick-ass chief. Why can't Astrid be chief? And I think I think that would have played really well into the whole like his mom is the badass like dragon lady, mm-hmm. um, and so and that sort of tips like the, the sort of usual expectation on its head. So to keep going with that would have been really cool. Yeah, I think so. And uh, yeah, like these are like just the the minor issues because you know they had some great stuff with like some cool platonic relationships between men and women and all this great stuff that they did. Um, but another thing that's just sort of along those lines in uh, in How to Train Your Dragon 2 is in the third act, um, Hiccup has an opportunity to, to rescue Mom in the big fight, and Stoic has an opportunity to rescue Mom in the big fight, and she doesn't do anything. Like, she's not there for any purpose, and she should have been because she's cool and she's present. Like, I think that it would have been a lot more thoughtful and interesting if, like, Stoic rescues her and then she rescues Stoic. And we get that whole, like, they're both right, they both have something to offer kind of thing, but she's just continually in peril. And it, like, she screws up flying the dragon. That's the one thing she absolutely should be able to do is fly the dragon. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I remember my favorite part of that movie was... Um, after Stoic dies, mm-hmm. spoiler. You're like, yeah, <laughs> spoiler. You're like, okay, that's the end of the movie. We're gonna get a third one, but then it's like, nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> that was my favorite part. <laughs> and yeah, you know, I've been really curious, just to, as a sidebar, to check out the um, the TV series. That, like, I think it's on Netflix. Um, I've watched a little bit of the like Dragon Riders of Burke one that takes place between the two movies, and as those kinds of things go, I, f- I thought it was pretty good, so I'm kind of curious about the new one that takes place after the second movie. So I watched the one, it was before the, the second movie, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, like Dragon Riders least... of Burke or whatever. It had like three it, it different the, names. I'm... It was like the little the lower budget one. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it was the one that slowly introduced some of the rarer dragons, and that was really cool. Yeah. Um, so I, if, I'm sure if they keep doing... That was always my favorite part, was just, like, when he goes through the Book of the Dragons, just describing them yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah, and the funny thing, like, I, I, it made me pretty curious, actually, to, to read the books. I know that they're, like... I've heard they're nothing. really different. Yeah, like, nothing. <laughs> like, nothing like the movies. The thing that uh, made me not interested in, in the books was... I went on Wikipedia, and I think that, you know the little tiny dragons that eat the fish? Yeah, the little baby guys. That's what um, Toothless is supposed to be. What? Okay, well, yeah. I mean... they're, like, totally not cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess that's what he was first, though. Okay, but speaking of... Speaking of things being adapted from books into TV shows and things, I've got a very controversial opinion Ooh. to share. I really don't like the Game of Thrones TV show. <laughs> oh, 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 straight out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I understand what people like about it, obviously. And, like, it's, I mean, what people like about it is the stuff that's cool in the books, too. Like, absolutely. I love those books. Like, they're they're not flawless by any means. There's a lot to be said for, you know, certain choices of George R. R. Martin's, but I find them completely captivating. I tore through that series last year. And so I was like, hey, like, I want to I wanna see, like, what they did in the show. I'm curious, because like, I just never really had the opportunity to watch it. I don't have HBO. So I looked up scenes that I really enjoyed in the books, and every time I watched it, like, I know that part of it is just like, eh, it's different, me. But, <laughs> but like, I just feel like they've made some really questionable choices on the show, and I think that, like, 
some of the stuff in the TV show that people have had the most issue with is the stuff that ended up being the most different from the books. Like, I, f- I feel like those showrunners are trying to, like, when they try to do their own thing, they just screw it up. <laughs> they always they always decide at a certain point that they're like, okay, we're doing our own thing now. And so we can, they, be, they create this, like, weird, I don't know, parallel dimension where things are just completely different. Well, and I don't know, are, are, have you watched the show any? I'm up to date on the show. I have not read any of the books, but I have okay, friends who've read the books. I just want to make sure I know that we're just got going, you know, spoiler crazy on this show, but I didn't want to spoil anything for you personally if you <laughs> if you were, I, like, still watching or something. As far as I'm aware, the books and the movies are pretty much at the same, or the show, are pretty much at the same point now, right? No. Well, here's no. the thing, is the latest season of the show basically has nothing to do with the book Oh, anymore. that's right, that's right. They patched because, it up, and they made up their own John stuff. died a while ago in the book. Yeah, actually, John died at the end of the latest book. That's it. Like, that's all we've got. John died. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, like, that's the last thing that happened. Okay, and, um, then, and then the show's like, okay, but he was really popular and cute, so we're gonna bring him back. Well, here's the thing. I, I fully expect him to be resurrected in the books. I think that was Martin's intention. Yeah. Um, there's just the whole Azora High thing, and lots of people are brought back from the dead all the time. Like, this is a thing. I think that's gonna happen. I don't necessarily think it's gonna happen the way it happened in the show. The way he died is not really the way it happened in the show. Um, but the, 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 I think the thing that really um, typifies the differences between the books and the show that bothers me is Sansa oh Sansa I love her I love her she's my favorite character in the books at this point um but the thing is in the books she did not marry Ramsay that that's nowhere near happening that will never happen I don't expect that to happen just a little bit um (laughs) like First of all, I don't know, I don't understand how the show has just completely ditched the idea that she's still married to Tyrion, who's still alive, and that's a complication. She can't just get married to someone else, and they bring it up in the books. Even um, if he was banished, or did he, no, yeah, he had to he, run away because he killed yeah, his father. Yeah, he ran away, he's he's being hunted, he's so, wanted. So there's no, there's no uh, nullified marriage going on. Yeah, no, she's still married to Tyrion in the books, and, like, legally, she's still married to him. She's hanging out with Littlefinger. The last thing that happened with her, she's hanging out with Littlefinger, and he's like, hey, girly, I got this plan, and it's great. Now, it's it's I, I think that he's up to something, because he's Littlefinger, and he's always up to something, but he's saying, I'm going to have you marry this guy named Harry, because, see, in this really bizarre roundabout way, he is the heir to the Eerie. And so you'll marry him, and then you'll control the eerie and then we've got this north thing going on and it's going to be super rad i don't think that he's really intending her to marry him and i don't think that actually works upon scrutiny but that's not what we're talking about what we're talking about is that somebody else entirely marries ramsey and we don't really see much of it it's it's jane pool who um show watchers will not remember uh (laughs) she was like sansa's she was sansa's best friend in the beginning she was like the the Chamberlain's daughter at Winterfell or something. I don't know. Like, she was just some girl that lived at the castle, and she was Sansa's little friend in the beginning. They were like, oh, my goodness, Sir Lancel is so cute. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Whatever, all these knights, I love them. Um, She is being passed off as Arya, and Ramsay has married her under the supposition that that's who she is. Oh, okay, that's interesting. And Sansa is pieced out of there she has nothing to do with any of this but like they keep adding in these things just i i mean i feel like it's just for salaciousness like they want to show and so then i think that martin gets like a worse reputation for like brutality and like violence against women when really a lot of the worst stuff in the show wasn't in the books at all one thing that i'm really interested about is like the show seems to really not care if a character dies but then, but then, but then they'll put their main characters into these positions that they weren't in just so they could give them more screen time. So it's like this weird, like, I don't know, it, they're not consistent in that way. Yeah. Yeah, another, ugh, ugh, ugh. the one that makes me real grumpy, though, is um, the Lannisters, Cersei and Jaime, 
that particular scene of repute. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, there was a, the, a lot the one, about that. Yeah, the scene where in the show, Jamie kind of, well, Jamie rapes her after he returns Boyface. <laughs> after Boyface dies. So I don't know, like, I couldn't think of his name, but, uh, like there, yeah, that scene where where he in the show it's a rape. In the books, it's not a rape. It's not a rape at all. Like it's very clearly. And and the odd thing is, at least from what I remember, it was like a year or two ago now that it, that scene happened. Um, a lot of it was just Cersei's face, how she was act, like how the actress oh. was acting in that scene. It was... How trashy is that? They're like, watch her pain. Watch this happen right? to her. Right? They could have made it the sexiest, like, really it's, intense love the, scene. The thing is, in the books, it's actually really uncomfortable. It's a, it's not a good time. It's consensual for sure, but it is kind of the breaking point for their relationship where Jamie and Cersei both come to realize that they're not on the same page anymore. Yeah, well, and, and she like, is Jamie's like, like... She's just, like, completely out of her mind in grief... And it maybe she was trying to portray that, and maybe the the directors were trying to be like, "Hey, you're really confused right now," but for it just didn't come across right. Yeah, I I I know, <laughs> and it's I mean, it, and Martin does make it really clear that she is consenting to this happening, and it's weird and like icky from a reading standpoint, but he's not Jamie's not forcing himself on her and you know it's just sort of a breaking point for the relationship where they haven't seen each other in so long and then Jamie realizes like hey I'm like a different person now and I don't really like all this stuff you're getting up to and it's not what I wanted it to be and she's like well then you're just a wimp baby and I don't like you anymore and they break up (laughs) but like it's it's a whole other emotional thing going on there and it uh, I I they could have easily solved it with like a they're they're getting really into it and she's got this weird confused look on her face and he and he could have just and she could have he could have asked her just like quickly like you know are you okay and or she could have said like keep going even if she was in like this in, with like this really tormented in the grief ridden like, face yeah she she really she does like verbally consent like she does verbally i can't remember the precise wording because it's been a while since i read the book but i remember a very clear because it was sort of a progression of her being like oh this is weird jamie no well yes okay uh uh-huh uh-huh i'm into it like (laughs) she she definitely like said that that was what she wanted anyway so like i know like everybody loves that show and they ought to if they do but like i just feel like yeah so you know from in the show that Cersei blows up the septum and it's just like the best thing ever that has ever happened in TV. Um, yeah. Did that happen in the books? No. Oh my god! Because that, that, is, that is my favorite moment of television last year. She she's always been my favorite character just because she's such a bad bitch. Um, See the thing is in the in the <laughs> in the books she's really a lot less likable. Okay. She. I mean, like, she's very interesting, and we get a lot of point-of-view chapters um, with her in uh, Feast for Crows, I believe it was, Um, and she's just, like, she's just, like, a really messed-up lady, and she's, like, the thing is, and and I totally get what they're going for in the show, and I think it's a totally reasonable, admirable thing to do to, like, turn her into this cool, like, conniving lady who, like, can get one up on the guys and do all this stuff, but... In the book, she really is just kind of insane and awful and not very smart. Well, I'm glad they're making her likable just because people might not watch if she if she was her book self. It, I, I know that's kind of harsh, but like no, no. it doesn't it work the same on TV. Screen, it takes up a lot of screen time. Uh huh. No, I people totally get what they're good. doing. I and, mean, they keep player. Yeah, and another character they changed uh, in in sort of an interesting way for the show is actually Littlefinger. Um, because it's, there are certain things that are just, you can't portray in the same way in TV and, and in a book. Um, I think that Martin can get away with Cersei being this way in the books because you get more into her head and you get behind her psychology. And so even if she's like kind of hateful and awful, she's fascinating in a way that she wouldn't be when you're not in her head. Yeah. Whereas in the show, it's all about their actions exactly uh and so similarly with Littlefinger 
the whole deal with him is he's a sneaky, sneaky dude. But the thing is, everyone in the show seems to know he's a sneaky, sneaky dude, which kind of means he's not that sneaky. Like, if everyone's like, I don't know about that little finger guy, he's suspicious. He's not very good at what he's doing. In the, in the book... Well, he's so predictable to the audience, too. Yeah, and he's he's not predictable in the books. He's great. We're like, I okay, really he's gonna go him. chase after Sansa. Okay, he's gonna go try to somehow get with Sansa. Like... One note. Yeah. One note. He's like, yeah, he's up to a lot more in the books, and it's easier to portray that in a book because, you know, you get different perspectives, different things, and you get glimpses of things, whereas everyone in the books just thinks Littlefinger, he, oh, yeah, he's that nobody guy. He's good with money, though. He's pretty helpful. If you need something, you can go to him. Like, he, nobody suspects him. That's why he's good at what he does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he's, like, this shady dude, he can't get much done. <laughs> Well, gosh, what's next on the list? Um, so on my list, you're going to hate me for this, I think. Oh, no. Uh, I put Hannibal. Oh, boy. We're going to have a lot to talk okay. about. <laughs> so, so I don't hate it at all. I just want to say that. I have only seen, like, four or five episodes. But no matter what time of day I try to watch it, no matter what sort of headspace I'm in, it always just, like, rattles me to my core. And I oh. can't, I can't continue. And I think it's because... It's sort of like the mind of the killer kind of thing mm -hmm. that makes me go real deep inside my own head. And okay, then so it, yeah, I mean, so it's very effective then. It's so effective, but <laughs> but I want to watch it because I want to I want to see what happens, and I, it's interesting and it's beautiful. But oh, you don't even know it yet because you, you've only watched then from the first season, right? Yeah, I know, but I can't go any you farther. You don't even know. The final season is the most beautiful piece of television I've ever seen. It's a masterpiece. I believe it's the best TV show ever to air. Fight me. I, I, need, <laughs> to find, I need to find somebody who can, like, protect me and, like, give me cookies after I watch an episode or something. Because, like, it, 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 it makes me want to, like, throw my computer away and, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's... Oh. You don't even know then, honey. Like, <laughs> it's so much it's, worse. I'm sure it does, but, like, and it's not even the, it's not, like, horror, and, and it's not necessarily the blood. Sometimes, a, like, a ton, ton of blood can mess me up a little bit. But I think mm -hmm. it's just, like, the whole internal struggle yeah. thing. Because I have, I don't know, I, I have uh, a lot of anxiety, and it just makes me, like, think, oh, geez, what if I'm a psychopath? What if I'm, you know... <laughs> you're, you're you're experiencing what Will Graham is experiencing in the exactly. show, and he doesn't and he does not have a good time on that show. He has the worst time. <laughs> that boy, I swear to God, especially as it goes on, like every scene, he either looks completely dead inside or he's just moments away from bursting into tears. Like that is the look on his face at all times. And I just want to watch it so badly because I love him. He's one of my favorite actors. And he dancy? Yes. Oh, yeah. I love him. And I'm, I'm just the biggest Mads Mikkelsen fan on the planet. I It took me a while to come around. I, I sort of really liked him in um, Doctor Strange. I haven't seen it yet. What is wrong with me? It's <laughs> it's it's a fun, it's a really fun movie. The, the, the makeup slash effects choice they chose for his character, I didn't like because it's really distracting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I don't know, I just, I like him in that a little bit. Um, and then he, he was in another movie. Oh, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, he was I liked he was him Papa. a lot in that. I liked him <laughs> yeah. a lot in that. Yeah, I love him in, I love him, listen, man, I love Mads in everything. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just the biggest fan of his right now in the world. His accent, I, I think his accent just draws me in every time. He's such a he's such a good, uh, total sidebar here. This will probably get cut, but <laughs> he's just... <laughs> He's such a good physical actor, and that's something that I find, actually, this will get put in. Mads is so good with his body, because he was a dancer, he was a gymnast, so he's a really incredible physical actor, and I think that has a lot to do with what is so powerful about his performance, is every inch of his being is being channeled into conveying this character in a really effective way. You might really like... Uh, him and Doctor Strange then, because he's, you know, it's an action movie. Yeah, I know, I was like, oh boy. Magic. <laughs> yeah, he, they, he was talking about when they approached him, and they were like, yeah, it's kung fu wire fighting. He's like, you don't have to tell me anything else, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, but you're going to have to have, like, this weird glowy purple mask around your eyes the whole time. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> now, he's a chill guy. He's really great. He's, he's an awesome person. But, no, he, Hannibal is a really effective and affecting show. And yeah. it's Brian Fuller. He's an amazing showrunner. Like, he did... What um, else did he do? He did, see, the his sort of least known is Wonder Falls. I haven't watched that myself, but I'm curious because I like literally everything else he's done. <laughs> uh, he did Pushing Daisies. I loved Pushing Daisies. It was he so good. He did Dead Like Me. Uh, I loved De- Dead Like Me. <laughs> I know, right? And now he's doing American Gods, which is premiering next month, and I'm losing my mind <laughs> because Brian Fuller is my favorite showrunner, and American Gods is one of my favorite books of all time. This show is gonna be spectacular. I wonder if the reason I can't get quite into Hannibal is because it doesn't have the humor of his other shows. You know, okay, it doesn't have the sort of lightheartedness, but I absolutely yeah. believe it has a sense of humor. And as it goes on, the sense of humor just gets better and better. Okay, well, that's something to look forward to if I can ever manage it. <laughs> I mean, Hannibal loves his cannibal inside jokes. That boy, his. <laughs> favorite thing to do is say some cannibal double entendre and nobody knows but him and he's so pleased with himself (laughs) it's so good and honestly because i've watched that show like three times now i'm obsessed (laughs) like every time i watch it there's something else to find i uh well yeah i just remember when it was still on like people were always posting like either gifts of it or or just screen grabs and i'm like this is so pretty it is <laughs> oh and it just gets prettier it really really does it and it, I, I will tell you the, the 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 final season is something of a trip like it gets a little weird and esoteric especially the first half i think that there are reasons why people kind of lost interest in that season because people they're like what's even going on in this show anymore? Like, this used to be a crime serial. What is this? <laughs> it's not anymore. Now it's a gay love story. <laughs> and it really is. Uh, it's my favorite thing. <laughs> Another reason that I want to, you know, make it through. <laughs> yeah, and, and just putting it out there here on tape, it is canonically and truly, word of God, a gay love story. Hannibal Yay. and Will Graham are in love from the mouth of Brian Fuller, from the Twitter of Brian Fuller. It's real. <laughs> it's true. It doesn't look like normal people love, but it is love. <laughs> anyway, we got a little off track from our, our topic of, uh, I just started gushing about something I love and that's not really what we're doing today. So, um, maybe we should, <laughs> well, I mean, we, we still talked about like why it's not for everybody. Sure. Um, okay, big can of worms, and, um, okay. I think that- <laughs> Game of Thrones think, wasn't. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, but no, this is a serious can of worms that I think I do want to do another episode on, just because I have so much to say about it, but I will give a little teaser about it, because it's, because <laughs> it's Twilight. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Because <laughs> I just gotta say, like, because I know it's one of those things that people- really loved and like i totally get it like i read the first two books i totally that's as far as i got to well okay it wasn't i didn't ever intend to read past the second book i read those two books for academic purposes (laughs) (laughs) and it was not for pleasure but man did they fly by like, it was the easiest reading, and not in the, like, this is a baby book kind of way. I mean, it is very accessibly written, and it just really clipped along. Like, well, yeah. it was it was a real f- fun read. Well, like, and it, it, it spread through high schools like wildfire. I remember I, I, was, yeah, in my fresh, I, remember I was in my freshman English class, and I saw um, one of my friends with it, and I, I saw the cover, and I was like, Oh, that looks interesting. And then the next, like, I don't know, it was like six months later, everybody had read it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, and I, yeah, I, I didn't. People were like, oh, you like vampires. You should read Twilight. And, of course, I was one of those contrarians in high school. So I was like, I don't want to read it because everyone else did. <laughs> but I, uh, I will say, like, I totally, totally, totally get what people, especially young women, really enjoyed about it. Of course, so much has been said about 
what is questionable about it and ultimately like it's not it's not stellar writing but boy is it easy to read um had you read the first one by the time the movie came out no okay because that was such an exciting night waiting for that movie to come out so (laughs) i have a little bit of a story um we thought we were going to the midnight premiere but we went to some like weird second night premiere so all of our friends had seen it except for a couple of us so we were waiting in line for like this non-premiere premiere Mm -hmm. but we were still really excited and there are also a lot of problems with that movie Uh but it had a good soundtrack (laughs) it did they play they use muse i love muse (laughs) that made that 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 movie probably grew their fan base by a, a huge amount yeah, well, because that was they got all of the people who would have liked it but just didn't want to read a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, I will say, like, total can of worms here because I have a conversation about that series that is not the usual conversation about that series. I'm sure you could find a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, people like to do a feminist reading of it because that's a very obvious one to do. Like, there are clearly some complicated gender issues going on in that that series but i have a whole other bone to pick with it (laughs) so i will do that on another occasion it also has probably more than any other mainstream book or movie dealing with native americans which is that's my bone (laughs) that's your bone okay okay good then we'll save that because there's a lot there I wrote a. I wrote that was my senior thesis. In college. <laughs> <laughs> no my joke. senior thesis. Oh my gosh! I'll, we'll have to do an episode about this too. My I, one of my I almost minored in film studies, but oh. I just didn't go through the right channel, and I was just taking it because I liked it. Um, mm. But for the capstone cl- course, which wasn't actually a capstone for me, because again, I didn't apply for, apply for the minor. <laughs> um, it was it was like a film politics class but it wasn't like documentary politics it was like politics about like mainstream movies yeah the politics of hollywood of filmmaking of yeah yeah and i ended up doing my final essay in that about transgender representation in in hollywood yeah so i have a lot to talk about (laughs) cool yeah so we'll uh we'll leave that one off now but but if we're gonna talk about twilight we gotta talk about gross Twilight. We gotta talk about Hemlock Grove. <laughs> oh right! Oh, I was like, where are you going with this gross Twilight? Is that like some weird comic I've never? Oh, Hemlock Grove is gross <laughs> Twilight. Okay, okay. It is because neither of us could deal with this show. Like, I'm pretty sure we both stopped the same scene. <laughs> yeah, pro- probably. So. And, like, like, it just hit me. Like, wait, I don't like this at all. I can stop watching. <laughs> yeah, why? Yeah, yeah, why am I watching this? Like, Netflix is compelling me because I'm so used yeah. to watching the entire series. I, I can just leave. I could just not. I could just pick something else. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> and I did. Well, okay. Here's, here's one. Just one of the many things got me. Like, okay, B- Bill Skarsgård. He's not a he's not a good actor. I think I've told you about my my theory about the Skarsgård family. Oh yeah. When when you were when you were pitching the idea for the podcast, you you went on a Scars Guardian rant. Okay, all the attractive Scars Guards are not very good actors. All the weird looking Scars Guards are great actors. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, <laughs> Bill, he looks like an Abercrombie model. So, uh, he's oh god, like like first of all, I just feel like he's just a, a like a like a store display mannequin, and that's his <laughs> range of acting. Uh, he can't. I get nothing from him. He just, his character does gross and awful things, and I don't like him. And then suddenly it turns out he and Mr. Werewolf are friends. I, like, totally didn't see that coming. I was completely blindsided by them just being buds because I just hated him so much and figured Werewolf was the protagonist. And so Vampire, well, he would have to be a villain because he's awful and, like, raping people with mind control and doing drugs and being gross and creepy. Like, why? What kind of a protagonist? Okay, so, so speaking about the the rape scene, I think that's probably the place where we both stopped. I think we uh, went a little further, oddly enough. Really, I, I like 
normally that doesn't bug me, um, and that's just due to my own life experiences, but it was just one of those days where I was like, you know what? I don't need to be consuming this. Like, I don't need... Well, there was just no good... To... There was no it justification. Was not... There was no reason for it other than to show, oh, he's a bad, nasty boy, you know? Yeah, like... he's just a yucky boy and I hate him. <laughs> yeah, and I think the reasons I was sticking with that show are because, like, the themes are kind of neat. Like, everybody sort of loves the sort of supernatural sure, thing that and draws I was... you in. I was stoked when it was first coming out because it was one of the first Netflix oh, the originals. Trailers, the trailers got me. They really got me. And then I, I thought the werewolf guy was really cute in like a scruffy yeah, way. Is that the puppy he, dog he was... look? <laughs> he, 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 he was also in uh, Degrassi. Was he? He was in one of the later... Well, I mean, it's still going now. as also a Netflix original. Um, <laughs> but before it moved to Netflix, one of the later last seasons he was a character on it i think and i, I kind of i didn't really like his character in that but i recognized him and then he had the beard in the show so i was like okay <laughs> I, i'm here and then of course i should have googled her name before i even mentioned it but um from x-men uh the mom in the show right um frig i can't remember who that famka was jansen famka is that how you say it? f-a-m-k <laughs> I, I I don't know. Sounds sounds Scandinavian, and well, I just anyway, couldn't she's begin. Gray. She's Jean Grey in the X Men movies. Yeah, and yeah. Now I remember. Now I remember like, that that's who that was. Yeah. Amazing, awesome lady. And then in in Hemlock Grove, she's like sort of like this villain lady, and you don't really know what side she's on. And is she like evil to protect herself and her family, or is she just like weird? So she's a bit of a Cersei Lannister. <laughs> I would, you know what? That definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. I will tell you this then: if you like that archetype of like the sophisticated, mysterious lady who you're not sure what her motivations are, you got to keep watching Hannibal. Okay, yeah, that is my like. Yeah, because um, do you archetype. like <laughs> do you like Gillian Anderson? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I was like. I know that name. <laughs> yeah, Jillian Anderson. She's in that so, show? Yes, she is, and she's the best character. Oh, I need to keep going then. I just need to power okay. through. <laughs> well, listen, buddy, listen, buddy, if you, need a, if you need a watching friend, I will always watch Hannibal. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, it was just, I, I guess... The things that Hemlock Grove was trying to do to make me like these characters just wasn't enough for me to get past everything yucky about it. I don't think they were trying that hard. <laughs> I guess not. Because, I mean, certainly it wasn't sufficient. Even, even but... the werewolf guy, like, he, they weren't, like, he wasn't that redeemable. Like, he was just not yeah. a terrible. I mean, he was, like, he was nice. He was nice to the weird girl. Oh, that's true, yeah. So there was... Yeah, he, she, like, nobody liked to talk to her, but he was like, hey, pretty girl, like, what's going on with you? And, like, he was, and so, but it just felt really forced. Yeah, that, I, I really want, to, we need to, like, bring on somebody who's seen the whole series and, like, interview them. Yes, because we cannot possibly, possibly watch it ourselves. I mean, it, <laughs> it, if I was getting, like, if I had to do a research paper either for a grade or, like, I was going to get paid for it when it was published, I would watch it. But... Anything above, like, in, without that, yeah. Yeah. No, no, we need to find someone who watched it and liked it and get them to tell us what on earth they're thinking. Or, like, <laughs> or like maybe there's something later on that makes it redeemable, or... See, to me, that's just that's just not good enough, because, man, like, if, if it's like, oh, you just have to get through the beginning, it's like, well, that's not good. Like, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a poorly made thing. Yeah. It should all be watchable. <laughs> especially, especially, like, Netflix. Uh, I feel like... They were, for the most they were part, still getting their yeah, footing. They were, exactly. And for the most part, they have very watchable stuff. The only other things I wrote down were, like comedies that have sort of lost their charm oh um, god like big bang theory uh, two broke girls yeah how i met your mother mm, yeah i just i can't get into those like 
three camera sitcoms i just they just don't do it for me like they haven't since the 90s i there's just something i can't i just can't get it they're good do they're it. good to watch in the break room at work <laughs> yeah i guess so. <laughs> at least big bang theory is um how i met your mother i did end up binging but it was like way after everybody had watched it and it was just like something t- i don't know i was when you're feeling really hollow and you need to feel some sort of feeling in your world watch that show <laughs> okay <laughs> glowing recommendation <I> will... <laughs> when you feel like a shell of a person watch how i met your mother you'll feel half full <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah i yeah, ugh. yeah i don't know why i just like modern like modern three camera sitcoms like that because like you know there's i love several comedy series contemporary comedy series that could be called sitcoms you know 30 rock uh parks and recreation you know like i love those shows but the like this is a sitcom sitcoms i just like i don't know i don't know like i'm not sure what they appeal is attribute it to the the laugh track or the Oh my god, speaking of laugh track, have you seen this video? It's the best thing ever. Someone took a scene from The Big Bang Theory. And they just and cut out the laugh track? Th- they t- yeah. I've seen and it. it's horrible. It's, it's, it's cringe-inducing. It's like, oh god, you're right. This isn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they tricked us. Oh, another reason that I really don't like it is because um, the TVs at work, um, they'll just like loop a half of a scene for like a month and a half. Uh, oh, and, in the and, yeah, in like the the electronics department. Yeah, and oh my gosh, like oh, it, for the longest time they were looping the scene where um, Sheldon is like trying to uh, take his relationship with I don't know her name to the next level, <laughs> and with girl nerd, girl nerd, <laughs> um, and he like makes room in his toothbrush holder for her toothbrush and it's like it's it's funny like the first time but like after 50 times you're like this relationship means nothing <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a lot of people are are, are are um critical of the fact that they're sort of forcing him into relationship when they feel like he's as- asexual which i mean a lot of asexual people can have relationships and do have relationships yeah, that, that yeah, that's a misunderstanding of what asexuality is. Yeah, but it but it's also like they're really forcing it into like I don't know. I I, may, I just I don't think I've watched enough of it to really get a good grasp of what they're trying to do. But mm-hmm. I think because of the nature of the show, it just seems really inauthentic. Yeah. Uh, it's also really yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. But I I um I remember when it was first sort of getting traction. People were like, oh, Ashley, you've got to watch Big Bang Theory because it's a sitcom for nerds. And I'm like, uh, son, it's a it's a sitcom where the punchline is nerds. It's not for nerds. Like, yeah. I've watched it, and I'm like, mm, no. Like, this isn't appealing to my nerd sensibilities. This is just a sitcom where the characters are nerds. Isn't it funny? And like, oh, they're, they're so undateable, and they can't talk to women, you know? Yeah, it's just rude and mean, is what it is. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do have a clever like repertoire and and like uh, a reference now and again that'll be good. But yeah, well, you got to stumble upon something good if you're writing <laughs> that much, like just by accident. It's like fifty seasons at this point. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. Who's watching it? Who's watching that show? Who did it? <laughs> I'm sure we could talk all day. Uh, yes. I don't really have anything left on my list. Yeah, I think I, I think I hit all of the things that I had in mind, at least for now. I'm sure that this is a topic that we will want to return to uh, on occasion in many episodes. But uh, well, yeah, we've I got think... a couple things that we could we could bring up multiple times, like Twilight, and <laughs> I, I could rave about the Expanse and, and some other. Oh, yeah. about it and, and it's on tonight yeah, you, so i gotta go watch it <laughs> you best believe that i'm gonna be whining about game of thrones all the time <laughs> oh yeah it's coming back it's coming back 
And and someday, before the heat death of the universe, we'll get the next book. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Come on, George. Don't hold out on me. Okay. <laughs> well. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. It's fantastic. Please check it out. Until next time, remember, no, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.